need one. <laughs> the end of our three yes. panelists and we can turn it right to you if you're ready for that or okay. I could throw a question to the group and you've got a minute to collect what would you prefer? Are um, you like ready to rock and roll? I think I'm ready to rock and roll. Amazing. Yes. Yeah, it's All right. <laughs> well, please welcome to the panel, Jean Wong, and if you don't mind introducing yourself um, with the, in whatever way you would like to, everybody has, has had a chance to introduce himself. You can include gender pronouns if you would like and tell us a bit about why you're here today. Okay, sure. Um, so, Sego Anin Buju, I'm a Lastish. My name is Jean Wong. Uh, I am uh, primarily a director in theater, but I work, you know, a creator, a facilitator, an empowerer in all sorts of performance based work, um, you know, spanning theater to visual arts to music and whatnot. Um, I am mixed uh, Asian and Indigenous, and uh, um, I apologize for being a little bit late today. Uh, part of the reason is um, actually there was um, a flash mob that just happened, um, and it's still happening right now at King and Bay uh, at Standing Rock, for Standing Rock, and that's why I have a sign here. Um, and um, I think before I start talking, I just want to qualify one thing. So, um, you know, I actually started public speaking since I was 11 years old. That sort of thing, you know. I've been on stages, you know, prepared speeches, written them out, done all sorts of things since that age, uh, and um, so I'm very, very sort of attuned to, to speaking in front of people. Um, but more recently, I've made this conscious decision, you know, uh, in, in preparing speeches, in, in writing them, and, and all that sort of stuff, and practicing and timing them. I recognize that that's the way I was taught within, you know, this this Western structure. And uh, these days, what I want to do is actually. Uh, listen, uh, tap back into sort of, you know, the teachings of my grandparents and listening to my elders and not doing that anymore and uh, speaking from my heart and not really planning but feeling what's in the room and speaking what's necessary to come out. So uh, I say that uh, because, you know, sometimes uh, when this happens, um, things don't always sound as organized, they don't sound as flashy, um, those sorts of things. Sometimes, you know, I might pause or well, those kind of things. I just want to name that, that this is an intentional way of speaking and that I actually value it and I think it's a, a really good way to actually move forward. So, um, yeah, I was at this, this, this flash mob uh, for Standing Rock and um, it was interesting to me because, um, you know, uh, there have been lots of sort of organized protests going on with Standing Rock right now. And um, one of the things that isn't, uh, one of the things that hasn't totally happened yet is the flash mob totally at, the, at, at, at a really high level. And what I noticed yesterday was that um, on my news feed on Facebook, um, people were starting to say, hey, wait a second, there's a flash mob. I believe it, it was at, it was at Edmonton, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it was at West Edmonton Mall. Is that what it's called? That big mall thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and people were like, oh, wow, you know, that, that reminds me of like, I don't know more. Oh my gosh, this is really great, great. And then I, then I looked at my phone and uh, started getting a whole bunch of messages from people. And they're like, hey, we're going to flash mob King and Bay Street tomorrow at 4 p.m. Um, and uh, it's interesting to me because one of the discussions since I don't know more has been, you know, it was really great, it was really empowering, it felt good, all this art came out of it. But what comes after that, you know, when the movement died down, what was happening in those years of 2013 and 14 and 15, it was kind of like, what, what, what is it, what is it? But now with time, we're able to see sort of the overarching, or at least part of that arc of what's happening with Standing Rock, you know? You can start connecting dots um, from, you know, uh, all the way back, even down to the American Indian movement in the 60s, but, but more recently from, I don't know, more to Standing Rock now, you know, with these flash mobs. And, and you'll be seeing more of those happening along with the organized protests, like the really big one that's going to happen in Queen's Park on Saturday. Um, so um, it makes me kind of think about, you know, these days, um, these sort of, these sort of uh, organized things and sort of um, my sort of, uh, you know, time I'm spending with elders. What does that mean, you know, uh, for here? in the queer community um, with us and how we are organizing movements and how we are sort of connecting our historical times and this and that. And um, um, I'll share sort of a personal story about that. What I'm really thinking about right now is um, this weekend actually, um, I'm going to go, um, I'm actually going over to uh, Six Nations because there is, there's been some things that hap have happened recently over there where uh, several people have passed away um, and um, I'm actually going there because certain artistic things are getting passed on to me. And that's a huge honor, but you know, at the same time, I'm kind of like, oh man, like uh, when these elders pass, I'm the one holding it now, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I'm like, whoa, you know, there, there should actually be four or five hands that this should go through before it gets to me, 
right? And um, uh, this idea of, of where, where that is, like why, why don't we have that there? Um, and um, I think about sort of the uh, conversations I hear about in, um, you know, in queer communities about the AIDS crisis and how there, all these people die, all these people passed away in the time and losing those elders. And, um, uh, you know, there's a lot, I've been around people who, who were alive at that time, and there's been lots of emotions, and I've heard all this, right? And, um, you know, I've taken it in and, and whatnot, but at the same time, when I heard it, I, I, I now thought, think to myself, what did I do at that time? Did I connect with my elders, you know, during that period? And, uh, 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 you know, in this situation uh, that I'm about to walk you into this weekend, I have to say, no, I didn't, right? And um, um, that's a lesson that I take moving forward. And um, that's a lesson how I want to move forward in community and um, going forward, right? So, you know, that's something that I, I, I think about now, and it's sort of sad because this is someone who's passed away and moved on. Uh, but I think about who's still there, and I think about, you know, uh, who's around, and how do we hold on and build and strengthen those connections um, that we have here, that, you know, in this room, on this panel, all of you. How do we do that in, in really strong, intentional ways so that, you know, a um, uh, couple of generations, you know, whatever, 10 years from now, someone isn't sitting in a situation like I am right now, you know? Uh, that Those are the things that are kind of in my head and um, it's sort of influencing the ways in which I want to create, the ways in which the, the, the content I want to I sort of mold and stuff like that. So. Um, uh, I can talk about sort of my, my own individual projects or achievements and things of that sort, but you know, uh, at this moment, I feel like what does it mean without that future thing? You know, without that that those those four or five hands that I can pass things on to. So, yeah, that's kind of in my head right now, um, and that's what I got. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. Thank you.